What's up everybody? My name is Paper and today we're going to be talking about a deck that I've had a ton of fun with in Marvel Snap. It's a deck that I've called the Giants of Asgard. It's a deck that brings two ideas together into one powerful combo deck. The core of this deck consists of three cards, Lockjaw, Thor, and Jane Foster. Lockjaw's ability says when you play a card here, swap it with a card in your deck. Lockjaw's main purpose is to bring out the Giants of this deck much earlier than usual. Lockjaw can swap out for any card in your deck, no matter the cost or turn, so we always aim to play our low cost cards on his location to give us the most value. The other core cards, Thor and Jane Foster, work together as their own combo. Thor shuffles his trusty hammer Mjolnir into the deck. Mjolnir is a zero cost, zero power card that says give Thor plus six power. This is a great card to play onto Lockjaw as you gain the 6 power onto Thor and then swap out for something else in your deck that's guaranteed to have more than 0 power. Jane Foster comes out one turn after Thor and says draw all cards that cost 0 from your deck. This card is made to deliver Mjolnir to Thor, and we use it as such. Another key aspect of Jane's effect is that she pulls Wasp out of the deck as well, so if you play a Lockjaw with Wasp earlier in the game, Jane will pull that Wasp back out of the deck, making sure that future Lockjaw procs have no chance to pull that Wasp out of the deck, and it also gives you the free Wasp to play back in the Lockjaw to get another chance at a Giant. With these core cards added, let's take a look at some of the support cards in this deck. First we're looking at the 0 to 3 cost cards, as they are kind of separate from the Giants of the deck. Wasp, Sunspot, Armor, Green Goblin, and Ironheart all serve their own distinct purposes in this deck, but are not necessarily required for this deck to run smoothly. Wasp is one of the only zero cost cards in the game, which sets up a free lockjaw effect on turn 3, later to be drawn again with Jane Foster. Sunspot is great when your hand has no plays early in the game, which can happen when you're running 6 cards at 4 cost or higher in one deck. Armor and Green Goblin are some of my flavor choices to counter certain decks that are in the meta, such as Destroy decks and Wong combo decks. Ironheart is a great card to place on the Lockjaw to give her on reveal effect without her zero power downside. Finally, let's take a look at the giants that we've included in this deck. Odin, Magneto, Giganto, and of course the Infinite. As with the low cost cards, none of these are distinctly required, but they've all been chosen for a specific purpose. Odin is great for multiple Mjolnir activations, Ironheart activations, and the rare Return to Sender interaction with Goblin cards. Magneto, Giganto, and the Infinite have all been chosen mostly for their high power, with Magneto providing an effect that oftentimes can win you a game. All of these cards are great targets for Lockjaw to pull out of the deck, along with Thor and Jane. Some of the tech options in this deck that I would consider are Black Widow, Wave, Iceman, Scorpion, and Elektra. These are all cards that I have run in previous iterations of the deck, and basically you just want cards that are prime targets to play onto Lockjaw with a low cost and have an effect that either mess with your opponent's board or hand. Some of the tech options to replace the giants of the deck that I would consider would be Death, Hulk, America Chavez, and even cards like Jessica Jones, Vision, and Captain Marvel. I do believe the cards that I have in the deck are the best in slot, but these other cards do have cases to be made for their inclusion. This deck has won me quite a few cubes since I first got Jane Foster during the first Nexus event. Once you have Thor and Jane in your hand, or if you've already summoned a giant by turn 3 with Lockjaw, you can snap with confidence most of the time. The amount of power that this deck can output from turns 4 to 6 is quite high, so locking in wins can be pretty simple at times. I'm definitely using this deck to get to infinite in the Heroes for Hire season. It's the deck that I've had the most consistency with in terms of both snapping power and win rate. It's also the most fun deck that I've played this season, and I fully recommend playing this deck if you have the cards for it. And with that, I'll leave you with some gameplay of the deck from my stream. You can catch me live on twitch.tv slash paper, so give me a follow there to be notified when I go live. Thanks for watching, and good luck snapping. We're doing any sort of buffs to it. I'm going to put Lockjaw in the middle. I want Magneto to go on the right, and I want him to stay there, so... I don't have a lot of big cards in my hand, so this can pull out some monsters. Good. Thor...
Magneto probably wins the right by himself, but let's just put Thor here. Let's have a see. He can play some big stuff still. S Jubilee can pull out something here. I am Iron Man. Iron Man's a little bit scary. I don't know what he plays here. He did draw the Mjolnir. So we can put the Mjolnir back in the deck and then play Sunspot. Um, yeah, this is gonna be a snap. Magneto on the Fist Tower probably isn't gonna pull anything because I'm assuming he's gonna play something. But it's still gonna add 12 power to the right. Mjolnir to me. That with an armor that's solid doesn't have any effect because of Isle of Silence. That's why I bring Mjolnir Mjolnir again. Okay. to me. But I should win this right lane. Ooh, who's gonna Odin that hobgoblin back? I've already snapped. He has to play a bunch of power on both of these lanes. Wow. What is it? Did they just hide all? Magneto and he's still negative four power. Victory. Yeah. So Lockjaw Mjolnirring twice. Super effective. Super strong. They're great draws. I'm gonna play armor here. Hope that he plays Bucky here. The hood, okay, that's still fine. Armor prevents those from dying, so middle should be pretty simple lane. Um, top deck Wasp would be massive here, but we've got Tinkers, so we have four energy anyways. Let's do Lockjaw on this side. No, because he could be running Shang-Chi. Mm, we have Thor Jane. Like, we shouldn't be afraid of anything. Thor Jane goes in the middle, and then we have Odin for the Mjolnir. Probably just play the meal on your own lockjaw though. If this is a destroy deck that's running destroyer, oh my god, okay. If this is a destroy deck that's running destroyer, which I don't think it is now because of Moon Girl, so I think it's a, it's a death build, but he's not gonna be able to destroy much with death or for death, so maybe he's going. What he's going for here. This is pretty. Wakanda's pretty bad for him. Armor is terrible for him. He has to try to make both of these lanes strong so Destroyer can win the game. But the Moon Girl's throwing me off. I don't think he run Destroyer in a Moon or Moon Girl in a Destroyer list. Face the might of Asgard, Mjolnir. Bucky makes sense. It's the only place he can play it. I'm also getting a wasp from this lockjaw, so I can play both of those for free and play like Giganto on the left. Okay, well, I can't play anything for free now. But he can only play one card. Mjolnir here beats out Destroyer in the middle. Mjolnir two cards. to me! Victory. I had no more cards left in my deck for Mjolnir for Lockjaw. Uh, we have to play Lockjaw in this. We 
we actually have to, and we have to draw. We have to roll like a nut here. On turn six, oh my god, when's Lockshaw gonna pull something good? Turn six, I think I'm gonna play Magneto on the right to pull long. Play Sunspot first so Ironheart hits the buff. Ironheart goes in the deck. That's Mystique as well. I wonder if he waits until the last turn. Opponent snapped. Does he fill out this right lane? He doesn't. Look at that. Move everything over here. Spectrum goes off once. We have a turn seven, so. Add eight power to that. Wasp can come back as Ironheart. I think that's the worst play. Jane Foster should secure it with two power from Sunspot. And we reduce Lizard down to eight. That Thor. Nice. Mjolnir! What could he have played here? America, Quinjet. Nice. Magneto, super strong. I didn't see what he discarded. My fatal flaw, man. Wind, aid my hand. Let's just go for it. Let's just go for the Lockjaw Wasp for the Hail Mary Wind Middle. Let's go. Oh my god. Alright, finally hitting Lockjaw. There's nothing he can do about that. Um, we did draw Ironheart again. We just play Ironheart here. The plan right now is to top deck Magneto to pull that Wong off. So that we have a we have a win here. There's a chance he plays armor. Do we think one power is going to mean the difference here? I don't think so. Didn't make the difference. Let's go. That lockjaw was insane. Victory. Exact card that I needed. And I guess it could have been pretty much any card. I just need a one power. <laughs> but. We get a lockjaw out early. Um, do it in Fisk Tower. It's gonna suck later on. Uh, it's gonna suck later on because I would want to Magneto on that, but. armor into sunspot we're fine if armor comes out of this 
Um, I kind of prefer armor to not come out of this actually. Because last turn we can Magneto pull cards over there. Oh my god. <laughs> He's definitely not playing anything on this lane though. This is going to be like a Gato. Okay. So I got my Wasp to just throw in there as well. I kind of don't know if I want to do that though. He might throw uh, Dracula in this lane, because Dracula in this lane actually makes it kind of close. Um, play Sunspot and Ironheart here. Play Ironheart in the middle. Try to keep this left lane out of range a little bit. Magneto can pull the Dracula, which is really good. needs to be yeah, come on come on come on come on Thor needs to be on the right side here i can win back to building a fixed tower Face the, might of Asgard. the armor effect is still here but the armor is not active so we magneto pull dracula and ghost rider over to die He hasn't discarded anything, so Ghost Riders Ghost Rider didn't summon anything. Nice. So we pulled Dracula and Ghost Rider over. They should both have this, this tower. Nice. Magneto goes back in for whatever. Now it's armor. <laughs> and then Thor should power up. Mjolnir! To me! Yeah, I'm loving Fisk Tower because I run Magneto in a lot of decks. So this is really strong. Hey, if you got this far in the video, I just wanted to thank you for watching my first Marvel Snap video. I plan to be releasing videos once a week at the very least, doing anything from deck highlights to stream highlights. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.